This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. To fill downtime between inevitable rejections. She invited me to stop by sometime, so I reluctantly went to the next day's rehearsal to check it out. What I encountered stunned me. It wasn't a few kids. It was literally a hundred middle schoolers. And these weren't kids holding tap shoes and filled with theater dreams. These were street-smart kids from the nearby city projects who probably had never been inside a Broadway theater, or any other one for that matter. I looked around the room through the sea of children for any helpers and saw two wary adult volunteers from the theater world that Jeannie had caught up in the tornado that would be my future life partner. I watched as this human cyclone choreographed and inspired the whole operation. There was no support from the school, no national organization behind her. Jeannie, the unemployed actress who did catering jobs most nights, was even paying for the kids' snacks. Most impressively, the kids were engaged, interested in having fun. Jeannie somehow thrived and excelled in the chaos. I had never seen anything like it. Her selfless service to these children made my cynicism melt away immediately. I remember observing her orchestrate the madness of humanity and thought, this woman can do anything. Maybe she can make me a better man. Maybe that's important. Maybe that's even more important than my career. Well, long story short, Jeannie did not make me a better man. Some things are impossible. Okay, fine. The reality is that Jeannie's influence on my life and career have been immeasurable. I guess in a way, I'm like one of those middle schoolers in the St. Patrick's Youth Center that Jeannie shaped. A rebellious kid with a little bit of Jeannie good in me. As you hear this story that she so generously shares, I hope that you get to experience a little bit of that for yourself. Hi, I'm Jeannie Gaskin. I'm absolutely delighted to read my story to you. In fact, nothing would make me happier right now. One of the gifts left to me by my pear-sized brain tumor was a paralyzed left vocal cord that I recently had surgery on to increase my speaking stamina. It temporarily left my voice like this, which is not so pretty. Luckily, my sister, Lizzie, is here to help me out with the first few chapters. She probably is the best person in the world, besides me, of course, to play me in the beginning of the story, because for one, she was there with me for a lot of it. And also, she and I sounded so much alike pre-surgery, we used to trick people on the phone, especially my mom. But we're not here to trick you. Thank you for listening to my story, When Life Gives You Pears. Introduction don't you hate it when you have perfected a magnificent schedule and then suddenly you get interrupted by an enormous brain tumor? That totally sucks, right? As an overwhelmed mother of five with a touring comedian husband and a career as a writer and executive producer, I already felt that one more thing would be the wafer-thin mint that made me explode. The surreal diagnosis of a life-threatening pear-sized mass in my brain that required an urgent craniotomy with absolutely no idea of what kind of life I would be facing afterwards was something that I hadn't exactly left room for in my daily itinerary. As a self-confessed control freak, I had to face the fact that I was confronted with something completely out of my control. Ironically, Tumorgate turned out to be the catalyst for the radical revolution I desperately needed to reconstruct my priorities. As I am now making my journey through the recovery process, rather than asking, why did this earthquake destroy my house? I find myself saying, awesome. I needed to get rid of a lot of that old junk anyway. And wow, everyone, thanks for helping me build the new home of my dreams. Here, I reflect on how this potentially tragic prognosis strengthened my faith in God, deepened my love for my family and friends, and renewed my hope in humanity. So what I'm saying is, it's light reading. By the end, you'll all be like, boo-hoo, I want a brain tumor too. Of course, you don't have to have a brain tumor to come along on my journey. I hope my story will be valuable to everyone 
because life as we know it and as we have become comfortable with does not last forever. Folks who already have their priorities straight and who find love and gratitude in every